We're glad you're here today. We want you to feel welcome. Because this church is a place you can call home. Where you can grab a cup of coffee and meet new friends. Today, we're going to sing together. Not for the sake of being entertained, but as an offering to God. Today, we're going to hear the Christmas story. And we believe the Bible tells it best. No matter where you are on your journey, and no matter what's in your past, at this church, you are accepted. You're cared about, and you are loved. Thanks for celebrating with us today. And Merry Christmas. Tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. He rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love, and wonders of His love, and wonders, wonders of. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you, God, for this second service, God, that we're about to enter into today. God, we just pray, Lord, God, as we, uh, God, we just enter into worship. And Lord, again, as we mentioned earlier, that the snow was falling out. It's just kind of a, a cool setting, Lord. And, but Lord, what's even better is, Father, you're in this place. God, you, we already sent your Holy Spirit. We already sent your presence today. And we ask God today, Lord, that you would have your way in everything that's said and done. God, when we sing these songs, when we listen to the word, God, I pray, Lord, it just gets so embedded deep into our spirits today. God, we just praise and worship you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen. amen. You may be seated. Welcome. We are glad you're here today. So uh, we went to the text of the word, get into the loop to find all the events that's going on in the church today. Text the word loop to 509-309-0958. If you would do that, and get in the loop. Sunday morning worship, we've gone to two services now, 9 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Uh, again, 509-309-0958 to reserve your seat. We have some upcoming events that are happening uh, in the men's group. Uh, uh, it's going to take uh, place over in Connections Camp uh, Cafe at Mondays at 6.30 p.m. Uh, and that's always a good time for the men to get together and just kind of enjoy that. The ladies' Bible studies at 2.30. Uh, again, at the Connections Cafe right over there on Tuesday afternoons. And then the men's fellowship, uh, breakfast fellowship, is down in the multipurpose room Saturdays at 8 a.m. So you don't want to forget about that. And Connections Cafe uh, we we did not open last week, but we're gonna we should be open uh, today to enjoy some hot chocolate and some cider and stuff like that. So excited about that today. So the Holly Jolly Christmas Trolley Tour. Uh, I, it's not gonna I'm not gonna repeat that five times because it just ain't gonna happen. Anyway, it starts Wednesday night. We have sign up sheets out in the foyer. Uh, we have three different times that we're departing to go, and so people are already starting to sign up. And it's just going to be a blast. It's going to be a lot of fun, right? It is going to be. We're a going lot to decorate of fun. The, the 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 buses and whatnot. And yep, and we have yeah. room to socially distance ten per trip, and so yes. make sure you get yourself on the list right away so you can get your desired time slot. Yes, and you. Uh, it's just going to be a lot of time. So a lot of fun uh, this year again. So the children's program is going to be on Sunday, next Sunday, 
Uh, we're going to have one service, not two services next Sunday. So uh, be sure and come to that uh, at 10.30 a.m. And then next week. And our Christmas Eve service, December 24th at 6 p.m. Pastor, do you want to elaborate on that for just a second? We're going to be gathering at 6 p.m. and socially distanced. I believe we'll get everybody in. Yes. Um, uh, Ms. Kay has worked diligently. Uh, anything you want to share, honey, about that Christmas no, Eve? No, we're just excited. Christmas Eve is one of we our favorite are. candlelight yes. services, and so we're excited for everybody to be here. One hour, 6 to 7. I heard that there's going to be possibly some bells being rung that night. Possibly. 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 And then our prayer request, of course, text the word prayer to 509-309-0958. Amen. So at this time, I think we're going to be watching the video, and then we're going to do some worship. Amen. This morning, we continue our celebration of Advent, and we have the candle of joy this morning. It is our third week, and uh, Bob and Dan Danny Conwell are coming to light our three candles, our two purple and our one pink today for our candle of joy.
Lord, we love you this morning. And more than that, we know that you love us. Father, you've given us the greatest gift that could ever be given to mankind. And that is the gift of your precious Son. We praise you this morning, Father. We thank you this morning. We worship you this morning. We lift up your precious name, calling you holy, anointed one, King of kings and Lord of lords, as we come into your presence today, Lord. We know that there are all manner of things taking place in our world. We know that the enemy is running rampant in the hearts and the minds of men all over this world. But greater are you, Lord God, that dwells within our hearts and he that dwells in the world's hearts. And so we humbly come before you this morning and we thank you for saving our souls, for the joy of salvation, which is our strength, Father. We know in that salvation that when we've asked you to come into our heart and then we are called to proclaim you to a world that lives in darkness, just as the shepherds did that night when they saw and heard what the angels had to say. And then, Father, it is our responsibility to praise you, Lord God, to worship you, to lift up your precious holy name and let men and women know you are worthy of praise. So again, we humbly come before you this morning and thank you and worship you. Lift up your precious holy name. We pray for our nation this morning, Father. We pray for our presidents our Vice President, for all of our Congress, Senate, majority leaders, those who represent us in all of the districts, our governors. Father, we pray this morning that as a nation, 
the men and women of God who are praying, have been praying, and continue praying, Father, will with one voice lift their hearts and their minds, their spirits, their thoughts, Father, to one thing, that you would be glorified and we will celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Though we know you were not born on this day, we celebrate your birth, Father. Your son's precious gift, you gave to us your son, Father. And we celebrate that this morning. We celebrate that during this month of Advent as we lead up to that day that we celebrate his birthday. So, Father, we pray for our nation, that we will be earnestly on our knees praying for our nation to be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the peace that we talk about will start right here with us, to our neighbors, to our friends, to our families, that you be glorified, Father, and that they will come to know you as their Lord and Savior. Father, this morning we bring to you Rock Heath. We also bring to you, Lord Jesus, Tony Alexander. We pray, Father, in the loss that they have now experienced in their lives at this Christmas season. I, I stand here and you know my heart as on Christmas Eve when they lost my daddy. And Father, what a, what a blow it is when you have the patriarchs and the matriarchs of your family who were the movers and the shakers and you see their health dwindling. They become weaker. We're responsible for our, for our parents. The role is reversed. Father, I pray for Tony this morning and the loss of her mama. We pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just minister to her as I was just on the phone with her, Father. And just a few moments ago, her mom went to be with you. Lord, we pray for Rocky, Father, this man who loves you and his precious wife, Olga, battling with Parkinson's for so many years. And because of complications that were exacerbating her Parkinson's father from COVID, Lord, she went to be with you two days ago. Father, Rock's heart is heavy today. Tony's heart is heavy today. I think of Andy Shaw, first Christmas without Lori, Lord. Father, I think of others within our group. That first Christmas after Bob Willoughby lost his mama. Lord, I, I think of Danny Wooten. I think of Julie that first Christmas after they lost their parents. All of us in this room have a story to tell, a memory. Father, we know that you're in control of time and you are in control of all that goes on. So I bring to you these requests this morning, Father, for Bob Willoughby's sister and husband, for Jay Jones and their family as they are suffering from COVID-19. Father, that you would just reach down and just touch them. Danny Conwell, Danita Parkins, surgeries as they recover. Father, thank you for your precious hand upon these two precious ladies. For Ed Terry, who is a part of our congregation for over 10 years, now as he and his wife live in Oklahoma, the diagnosis of cancer. And I would pray, Father, that this disease would be eradicated from our nation and from our world. You would give doctors the wisdom, the techniques, the technical knowledge, Father. Father, to, to, to be able to know what to do and how to bring about this healing, Father, and eradication of this disease. We pray for Monique Sergarnado, Father, for the surgery of, and the healing and recovery that she is undergoing. Jared Cowles, back surgery and recovery. Father, we pray for Vic, Rick and Vicki Clements, Jackie Kulchus. We pray, Father, for these physical needs. And again, Cindy Kirchner, stage four cancer. We continue praying. Father, I don't know what the outcome will be. All I do know is I will keep praying for healing, Father, till you tell me to no longer pray that way. For Father, we pray the desires of our heart, and I would pray that each person in our congregation would be well, and healthy and strong. We know these bodies fail us. We know that they're weak. We pray, Father, that you will give us the strength to do the work that you've called us to do in the time that you've given us to do it. We remember Danny Havens, who's not feeling well this morning, Lord Jesus, both he and Ruth. 
with Ruth's surgery recovery, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you for those as Ruth and Danny and many within our congregation, so faithful to this congregation and this church. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. For Ed Voss's sister and brother, Lord God, for an anointing and an, again, cancer diagnosis. Father, again for Tony today. Kimberly Guitardi, blessing to have Kimberly with us today. Continued healing. I'm believing that. I'm just praying that, Father, for continued healing for all these who are battling with this cancer or, or Parkinson's or MS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It seems like this valley has a tendency to have more than its share of these illnesses and sicknesses. And I just pray, Father, that you would touch these precious ones. Again, for our military, our police officers, Father. Father, that as they do the work that you've called them to do, which I believe they're called to do it, there are some who, who it's just a job. But for the men and women who they're called to do it, oh God, would you touch them and would they touch the hearts and lives of the men who, and women who just do the job. Father, that we as a nation will rally together and support one another and lift up your name that others may be saved and brought into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Father, for our men and women who lay their lives on the line every day their families here and overseas. We pray, Father, for their well-being, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit, and for a touch from your precious hand, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Angels, let your song begin. house of the Lord today. I am so excited to see y'all, and uh, he is here. He is risen. Remember that? He is risen. Now, that's normally what we say at Easter time, but if, if there had been no baby, there would have been no he is risen, because there wouldn't have been no cross. Well, there were crosses at that time, but, but Christ was called specifically for you and for me as, as, as we are in this earth, in this time, uh, no matter what time zone you're in, you know, you're, you're here. Some are watching us from, from uh, New York, some are watching us from overseas, and some are watching us from just around the corner. So whatever time zone you're in, blessings on you this morning as we take a look at the third week of Advent, which 
I'm so excited. This is the candle of peace. We, we lit that third candle. You know that there's one candle that's different from uh, all the other candles in that circle, and it is the pink candle today. Traditional reading. A traditional reading. I'm not going to have you stand yet. A traditional reading on this Sunday. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I will say it again. Say it with me, will you? Rejoice. Rejoice. Even though our world is in pits of so much garbage right now, I will rejoice. For if I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, then I am a child of God, and I will rejoice. The world doesn't want us to do that. Does not want us to do that. Wants us to be in the doldrums. Wants us to be angry, upset, uh, depressed, apathetic, complacent. Let's pull, throw some other words in there. But as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. I pray that that's your prayer as well. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. This Sunday has been set aside. It's called the Gaudet Sunday. And it, 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 it translates into rejoice. Rejoice. We're looking at a number of scriptures this morning that are going to highlight what I'm saying to you this morning because it's not just based on what I think. It's based on what the word tells us and how we should live and how we should walk and how we should be in and as a child of God. And that's hopeful and joyful with peace in a land where it's really hard to find that according to the world. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning and we'll read from Luke 2. I'm going to read this a couple of times today. Luke 2, 8 through 12. We've heard it. We've read it. It's been read to us over the years. But it's the start of the story for all of us as we celebrate this season. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But... The angel said to them, we've heard it before, it's been said before, and it continues to be said, do not be afraid, for I will bring you good news, not just good news that will cause great joy, and not just great joy for a few people, but for all the people. For today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Father, thank you for your word this morning. I pray this, I think, every Sunday. Penetrate our hearts today, Lord God, with your word. That it is revealed in us in this time of chaos and anarchy and anger and bitterness that the joy of Jesus Christ that light shines through each one of us that the world knows that there is a hope and that they can accomplish the peace within their own souls even though everyone around them are at lost father I praise you this morning and I thank you for your word and may we apply it in our lives and know that when we leave this place we've been in the presence of almighty God for you've beckoned us here today father to grow in our relationship with you and with each other. In Jesus' precious holy name. Amen and amen. Before you're seated, turn around, say hello, wave, wave to everybody. I know that we're socially distanced, but make sure that you have a chance to let everybody know that you acknowledge that they're here. One of the things that people enjoy about the Christmas season is that it is joyful. It is joyful. All season long, we celebrate with music and with song and lights and decorations. I think I have seen more lights up in the, the Walla Walla area this year. So I hope, I hope you'll be a part of the Holly Jolly Trolley Tour. Did I get right, Randy? And, and, and socially distanced, uh, last year we weren't in the midst of COVID. And so we, we jumped on a couple of these buses and we went and we traveled. But now we're dividing it into three, three trips. And did you see all of the announcements this morning? It amazes me that we're, we're, we're reaching out in the community, but we're striving to do it carefully. We're striving to do it with, with ways that people will be, because we know that this is real, guys and gals. 
You heard in our prayer this morning, Rock Heath, next door, has the television. Um, they, take, they take all the televisions and hi-fi and stereo systems and, and ship them out for recycling. Olga, Parkinson's disease, both he and Olga uh, got COVID, but Olga's um, Parkinson's really, really, it affected it horribly, and yesterday morning she passed away. This is real, and so I'm, I'm not, you know, remember when this first came out, and we said, well, you know, hey, it's probably just the flu. I don't care if it's the flu, and I don't care if we think the masks work or not. I had a cold three weeks ago, and I made sure my mask was on so Kay wouldn't catch my cold. I even quarantined myself. I got the test. I did all that stuff, and it was, came back negative. Negative? Yeah, negative. And, and so quarantine, man, she didn't catch that cold because she's got allergy and uh, um, asthma so bad that if she gets it, it'll really affect her. So we're, we're abiding to a point. I know there's a mandate. There's a mandate for singing. There's a mandate for solos. There's a, a mandate. It's not been made a law. We respectfully declined on that when you see we're singing. I can't make you not sing or sing or, or, or whatever. But we want to make sure that everybody knows we take this seriously, guys and gals. We do. We take this seriously, just like we take the flu seriously, just like we take pneumonia seriously, just like we take these diseases because... It's here. And I want you to know that I am concerned as your shepherd, as your pastor, to do everything that we can. It's not a matter of the state telling us. They can't tell me. I can't. The Constitution tends into common sense. I don't want anybody to get sick. Even if you're a part of that 0.6% that die, hey, I really don't want you to die. I really don't want to lose anybody. I don't want anybody to get this stuff. So if you see me distanced from you or you see me talking from a, you know, I'm just striving to make sure, not because of our Constitution, just common sense. And so understand your pastor's heart. That's why we're still doing the holly jolly jolly, holly jolly trolley tour. But it's going to be new. We're going to see how it works, you know, how, if we can get everybody socially distanced. So anyway, just a side note on that. This is a joyful season. I, I, I know how that came about. It came about because even in the midst of all this stuff that's going around us, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have something to be joyful about because it is the joy of your salvation. It gives you strength. It gives you courage. It gives you boldness. It gives you wisdom. It gives you insight. It gives you the ability to do all you can to stand. And then what's the scripture tell us to do? Stand. Stand that men and women will know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. The world does not want us to be joyful. Ruthie, the world does not want us to, to, I'm not using the word happy. Happy is happenstance. Happy in the situation. Happy, but being joyful, the world does not want us to be joyful. They want that stopped. They want us as men and women of God to not say anything. Now, can I say this? Can I kind of take this back for, 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 for us as people? Why can't we be loud and proud as Christians, as men and women of God, and proclaim God as our Lord and Savior? I know how that terminology has been taken and put out there, but as for my God, I will be loud and proud for him, and I will proclaim him to this world that lives in darkness. Are we not called to do that? This morning, I want us to consider three truths about the joy of Christmas. Jesus brings joy of salvation, joy leads to proclamation, and joy leads to praise. All three of these points are found in this scripture that I just read to you. They tell us the Christmas story. The truths together capture really what I believe is the true meaning of the joy of Christmas. First of all, Jesus brings this joy of salvation. We've heard this. I preach on this a lot. I, 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 sharing that, that no man comes to the Father except by the Son. You must be born again. That's pretty evangelistic. I'm standing on that. But I know that for the most part, if I, if I know you at all, I know that you've made an acceptance of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't matter if I know that. It's between you and God and your relationship with God. That salvation 
Now we believe, and you know this, you would agree with me, Jesus brings joy in many areas of our lives, right? He brings joy into many areas of our life. But the joy that is especially associated with Christ's birth is again that joy of salvation. That joy of salvation. We saw last week as we were studying and in this word, the name Jesus means salvation. It means salvation. And this week I want us to see the connection that the Bible makes between salvation and joy and how it applies to our every life, everyday life. We read David's prayer in Psalms 51, 12. It says, restore to me the joy of what? Your salvation in my life. This is when David has committed adultery with Bathsheba. He has sinned literally against God. He comes to God and he says, I have sinned against you. And he realizes this and he repents of his sin. He calls back, truly restore to me the joy of your salvation. And God knew his heart. God knows our hearts when we mess up. God knows our hearts when we think thoughts we should never be thinking. He knows our thoughts when we look at things we should never be looking at. Why is that? Because when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become a child of God. And the enemy wants to rip us out of the hands of God himself almighty. But what does the scripture say? Nothing shall snatch you out of my hand. But boy, we sure have a tendency to want to walk to the very outer edges, don't we? David did. David did. But the cool thing is, is God knew his heart, and God knew David, and David knew God. And it's a relationship that continues to grow, to change, to evolve, not on God's part, but on our part. As we grow closer to him and realize the importance of this relationship with God Almighty. We find this same connection of salvation and joy because David's heart was restored to that joy. He didn't just thumb his nose at God and say, okay, listen, I sin, I'm, okay, forgive me, and then he went on and did his own thing. No, he walked and talked and lived and experienced that relationship with God after that moment. Did he make more mistakes? Sure he did. Do we make more mistakes after we've asked God to forgive us of our sins? Sure we do. God knows our hearts. Go and sin no more. Didn't that, isn't that what he said to the lady? You know, caught in adultery? He said, go and sin no more. He said the same thing to David. David, you know what? You know the truth. You messed up. I love you. I have placed you as a leader of these people. Now live by an example. Don't be pulled back down into the muck and the garbage of this world. Restore to me that joy of your salvation. There is the same connection between salvation and joy in Isaiah 12, 3. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. It's talking about the Messiah coming, guys. It's talking about this second coming for them, first coming for us, the second coming. We celebrate this Advent month because we're expecting Jesus to come back again. And with, with, with the host of armies, because he is not coming as a lamb. He is coming as a soldier, as a warrior, to claim his bride. And I pray that we will be ready as God calls us home. With joy you will draw water from the wells of the salvation, of salvation. I look at this scripture And I think of the first coming of Jesus Christ and how people were looking forward to that. Are you looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ? Are you telling people about Jesus coming to this earth as a baby? Are you telling that he grew into a man and that he gave his life on a cross for the redemption of our sins and that he rose from the dead three days later? Do people know that? Are we proclaiming that? Because that's going to take us into the next statement of what joy is about. Because the salvation, we come to Christ. Now we're called to proclaim that statement. What happened with Mary? As she 
Well, let's just take a look at 139 in Luke. And that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in a hill country of Judea, where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greetings, the baby leaped, leapt, leaped and leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And in a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored? that the mother of my Lord should come to me as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. I love this scene. I love this scene. Mary's coming into the house of, of, of uh, Elizabeth. And as she comes into the house, John the Baptist within the womb of Elizabeth leaps, jumps, literally jumps inside of his mother's womb. That's the Holy Spirit that brings the joy and the joy of the Lord coming. So too with us, that joy of the Lord has come. Are we joyful that, that Jesus Christ has come? Are we joyful that Jesus Christ is here? Are we joyful that he's taking our lives and using us in a way, in a time where despair is in people's hearts and minds? Are we telling them about Jesus? Are we proclaiming the joy of the Lord? How is it possible? How is it possible? John the Baptist was filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb. And we've got two members of the Trinity here in one house. You have God's Spirit that's filling John the Baptist and Elizabeth. And you have the Son of Almighty God who's in the womb of another woman. And so you got, you got two parts of the Trinity that are here. And that's pretty powerful. Something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. Salvation and joy belong together. And joy, as we celebrate at Christmas, belong together. Because Jesus came and we celebrate at Christmas, which brings us joy. Especially the joy of our salvation. So that our first point, I jumped a little bit ahead because I'm jumping into this proclamation. Because I, you know me, I believe that we are called to proclaim this if we are saved. If we are, if we are Christ's, if we are God's children, we're called Now to proclaim this. Jesus brings this joy of salvation and that joy leads us then to share that good news. And we find this truth demonstrated in Luke 2 again when we read, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby. We started this message with this as a part of the Christmas story, but take a look at this proclamation. Keeping watch over their flocks at night, an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Again, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. If you would with me for just a second, notice the news about Jesus' birth is not only news. It's not only news. It is good news. But let's not stop there. It's not only good news. It is good news of what? Joy. Good news of joy. And it's not only good news of joy, it is good news of great joy. And it is not only good news of great joy, it is good news of great joy for all people. For everybody, you and me, our neighbors, our friends, our families. Good news. We share good news, don't we? We share good news. When, when good things happen, we want to share that good news. We talk about it with our friends. We talk about it with the people at work. When we were all kids when we were in school, they talk about it with their, their, their college students. They share it. They post it on Facebook. The good news of a baby. Oh, my goodness. I can only imagine Ruthie when she had her grandbabies. She was proclaiming it all over the place. Proclaim, still proclaiming it all over. Mamas that are here. I got to tell you, when, when my, my little grandson is born here 
in another t- a month and a half. Uh, there's going to be lots of grandmas and grandpas that are proclaiming the excitement of this baby. And here I'm, I'm one of them. We had a baby. We had a baby. You'll see it on Facebook. You'll, you'll hear it on texting. You'll get it from all over the place. So if we're going to proclaim the good news of a baby being born, why should we not proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ being born as a baby over 2,000 years ago that died on a cross and rose from the dead so that we can have a relationship with Almighty God? That is exciting news. My question is, is are we sharing it? Are we sharing it? Luke 2.11. They proclaimed it. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. So what the shepherds do after they receive this good news of great joy that was to all people, let's pick up the story right here at Luke 2.15, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. I wonder if they were kind of questioning it, wondering. But if you'd seen angels that are the size of the Empire State Building looking down at you and telling you, behold, today in the town of David, a baby is born. Would you not listen? I think they listened. I think they listened. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Wow. What'd they do? They sat down, didn't they? They stopped. They didn't. No, they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they'd seen him, they kept it to themselves, hid it under a bush. Oh, no. They didn't tell anybody. What did it say it does? They spread the word. How did, how did they spread the word? Got to tell somebody. Got to tell somebody. We've heard that scripture, those statements. Got to tell somebody. What Jesus Christ has done, what God has done. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. Amazing. The shepherds heard this good news of great joy that was for all the people. What did they do first? They checked it out for themselves, found everything just as the angels had told them. Then what they do? They couldn't be silent. They couldn't be silent. They spread the word to others because good news is for sharing. And this was good news of great joy for all people. It didn't say just go tell, go tell your wives, guys. Go, go, go tell the other shepherds, guys. Go, go, go tell the, the, the people down at the river. He said, for all people. They had to share the good news with everyone. Joy to all people. It would have been wrong for them to keep it to themselves. And it's wrong for us to keep it to ourselves. Have you told anybody about Jesus this season? Have you told them about the birth of Christ? That he gave his life on a cross and rose from the dead. Jesus brings the joy of salvation. Joy leads to the proclamation. And thirdly, joy leads to praise. I love our praise time. I love worship. I don't know if you could tell it today, but man, here comes heaven. I mean, man, it was just, it was a looting out of us this morning in the worship team. And we've already sung those songs several times this morning in in preparation and the first service. And now, and it just got better and better and better. The, The note of praise So joy leads to praise. And it's demonstrated for us in two examples of this Christmas story. Mary, after she hears the word of prophecy from Elizabeth, Mary is filled with joy and wonder as her cousin Elizabeth speaks these words of blessing and favor over her and the child that she's carrying in her womb. Her joy could not be contained. So guess what she did? Guess what she did? What the scriptures tell us? Make a joyful noise. I don't know if Mary could sing. I didn't know if she had a good voice. I didn't know if she could carry a tune. But this girl broke out into song. And it tells us, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. 
He has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. He's mindful of each and every one of us in whatever state we are in because he knows our hearts if we're children of God. Amen? He knows us. Whatever state we might be in, from now on, she is not being, oh, look at me. I am the mother of, of, of the Messiah. They will, they will call, no, she is humbled. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things in me. You are blessed. You are the blessed children of Almighty God. You are blessed. You are blessed. Are you, are you, I keep saying this, can you be, boy, can you be loud for Jesus? Can you be proud for Jesus? Can you let the world, don't let the world steal that. It's just like, remember when we used to sing that song, um, uh, what was it, had gay in it. And so, man, we're, we're careful using that word because, there, listen, What's the song? Help me with it. It's a Christmas song. Um, uh, joy to the gay, the, whatever. To be able to proclaim it loudly and with a voice that I am a child of God. I have washed my robes in the cleansing fountain. I am a child of God. And she was proclaiming it loudly. I found favor. We talked about this last week. Favor. How did she find favor in the Lord? Because she believed. Jesus hadn't come to the scene yet, but she believed the Messiah was coming, everybody. Just like Simeon believed that the Messiah was coming in his bucket list. Oh, I just want to see the Messiah before I die. God honored that. God honored that. And he said, now your servant can go, for I have seen the precious promise. They had faith. They had faith. That the Messiah was coming. She had found favor in God. This song, as I was looking and studying this, this is called Mary's song. Mary's song, or 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 uh, the Magnificat, the Magnificat. I mean, she and people have taken that to to worship Mary. And, 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 and we pray to God through Mother Mary. And we, listen, no man comes to the Father except by the Son. That, that implies when we talk to him as well. We do not need a saint. We do not need Jesus' physical mother. We have a relationship with God Almighty through his Son. And that's the truth. And you can take that to the spiritual bank because God has promised us a relationship with him through his precious son. So Mary magnifies or glorifies the Lord for choosing her to be the mother of Jesus. It's still dealing with salvation, the joy of the salvation. Mary rejoices in God, her Savior. She's filled with the joy of God's goodness to her, and her joy bubbles over in her praise. I hope you can see the joy bubbling over. In us, I see it in you. I see it as you're worshiping the Lord and as the Holy Spirit takes over. It's just like that baby that's jumping inside of Elizabeth's belly. Can I say that? Inside of her tummy. That there is such an excitement of the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit takes over, all you can say is Jesus. Oh, I'm picking on Ruthie this morning. All you can say is glory to God. And that's okay if you do that. In this church, you will not be stifled. And I pray those of you who are watching on the internet understand the freedom of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit takes over, you might as well just get out of the way because God's in control. God's in charge. We find this same pattern when the shepherds return from sharing this good news of Jesus with the people in the town. Shepherds return glorifying and praising God for just a few couple of things that happened that day, right? That's what the scripture says. For all things, for all things they had heard and seen, which were just as they, as they had been told. And we've been told the truth, guys and gals. What are we doing with the truth? The truth is supposed to set us free. But what do we do sometimes? Hide it under a bush. Oh, yes, I'm not going to let it shine. Shine. Hide it under a bush. Oh, no. God's called us to let it shine through our praise, through our proclamation, and through the salvation that God has given to us. 
The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all things that they heard and had seen, which were just as they had been told. See, joy leads to the proclamation. They went out, they spread the good news that they had heard about Jesus' birth. But joy also leads to the praise. And so they returned glorifying. And what? I want to say jumping and leaping and praising God. I think that's what John the Baptist was doing in that when he was jumping and leaping. When was the last time you jumped and leaped, leapt, whatever, however you want to say it, for the glory of God, for what he's done in your life, for what he's doing in your life, what he continues to do in your life? Are you excited about the power of Christ even in a world of chaos? Because we're children of God. We got something to shout about, Art. We got something to praise about. We got something to proclaim because we've been saved. We've been saved. God chose these shepherds to be eyewitnesses to the birth of Christ. They would never forget what they saw. We are called to never forget what's taking place in our hearts. It's not just a happening, not just a moment. It, it is a life-changing experience that continues on every single day. So this third candle... This pink candle, the Advent candle of joy, reminds us of these three aspects of joy relating to Christmas. Have you ever wondered, you know, joy to the world, the Lord. I hope you'll remember this message. Three aspects of salvation, proclamation, and praise in our joy, in the salvation relating to our celebration, whether it's at Christmas time or Easter time or your birthday or Good Friday or Black Friday or Thanksgiving or whatever you want to do, are you celebrating the joy of your salvation? And can people tell it shining through the cracks and fractures in our lives? Because there's nobody who's perfect. We all have flaws. But isn't it cool how God shines through us, through his Holy Spirit? So we've got these three aspects. Jesus brings joy of salvation, joy leads to proclamation, and joy leads to praise. These three application points for us, I pray today that you will identify with, respond to, I had a brother tell me, he said, you know, you preach a lot of evangelistic messages. You talk a lot about salvation. What, what did Jesus say to the disciples? What did people say to the people? Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel. Okay, I am believing that we, when we accept Jesus Christ, become disciples of Christ. Amen? Amen. Is that where we stop? No, we're to make disciple. We, we, are, we are to be disciple makers. And we are to be encouraging. I know pretty much everybody, your relationship with God is between you and God. I may not know your inner deepest secrets, but God does and your relationship with him. But I would stand here and say that you've all accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's what you do with it afterwards that counts. Can't be just lip service. It's heart service. Connecting the brain, that, those 18 inches, to the heart. And let's make, or let, let me back up. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to make a difference and to connect these two, that souls are one to the kingdom of God. So when I preach evangelistically to you, I don't know if there's going to be somebody in a service that doesn't know Christ, so there will never be a message that I will end with not extending that invitation. Because I want everybody to have that opportunity so we know that it leads to salvation we know that the joy leads to proclamation we know that joy leads to praise are you filled with the joy of this season all the time oh pastor you can't ask that because there's things that are you filled with the joy that it pushes out the garbage? Are you able to get back up on top, to jump back up on top 
of that mountain and say, I'm a child of God. The gates of hell cannot even prevail against me, for I am a child of God. And he, through the power of the Holy Spirit, as in John the Baptist, allows me that joy even in the times of devastation and despair. So to that one who may not know Jesus, why not now? Why not here? And to that one who has, to you who have accepted Christ, if you're going through a trial situation, why not ask God to restore you and to bring you back into that joy of salvation? I know when people are down and discouraged and hurting, because they let the things of this world weigh them down. So God is saying to us today, you got people who are living in fear right now. What did the angel say? Be not afraid. Be not afraid. Can you tell your friends and your neighbors that? Can they see it in your life? Are you proclaiming it with praise? You don't need to be a trained theologian to share Christ with others. Just tell them that Christmas is all about his birth, his death, and his resurrection. And that he's coming back again. That he's coming back again. Good news. We all agreed. Good news is for sharing. Good news is for praising. Not just good news, but really good, great news. Not really good, great news, but really good, great, joyful news. Not really good, great, joyful news for a few people, but for all people. And somebody shared the gospel with you. And God's calling you to share the gospel with somebody. Have you told anybody about Jesus and his birth, and his death, and his resurrection this season? When was the last time? Challenging you. There are souls hanging in the balance that have never heard about Christ or have heard about Christ but made the decision at that time not to accept him. You may be that divine meeting for them to remind them of his saving grace. So my last question is, are you filled with joy this Christmas season? We should be, amen? Amen. I try to remind you, even with all the chaos and everything, we should be because of the Holy Spirit within us. Father, your word is true. Your word changes our very being from the sinful nature we're born into. Lord Jesus, I think too many times we keep this Salvation to ourselves. We'll let the pastor preach the word. We'll let the missionaries take it to, to the third world uh, nations. We'll, we'll, we'll let the evangelists uh, proclaim it uh, from the tabernacles. But us, we're just called here to hear the message. And I so strongly disagree because each one of us are called for such a time as this. We were first called to make a decision to accept your son as our Lord and Savior. And then we are given a decision. Are we going to keep it to ourselves or are we going to proclaim it like the shepherds did? And then we're given another choice. Are we going to follow all of that up with praising you and letting the world know that we believe this? We believe this. We want to jump. We want to praise. We want to worship. Sometimes we feel a little bit um, um, singled out. Oh, I don't want people to to see me raising my hands. I don't want people to to, to see me saying, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, praise your precious holy name. When we're in the assembly of, of, of other believers, they might think I'm a fanatic. Praise God. May we be fanatical. John the Baptist was pretty fanatical, Lord. He's a great example. He went around with camel hair and ate locusts and and, uh, all manner of of other things, no telling what he ate. But this dude was excited about the Messiah coming. One, by the way, that he wasn't even worthy to tie his sandals, but he was called to go before him. And we're called to go before your second coming, Lord, whenever that may be, and let people know time is at hand. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. 
Who do you know, body of Christ, that doesn't know Jesus or who's not walking with Christ? You may be afraid to tell them. But you know what? I would be much more afraid to stand before the Lord and him say, you know, I had this opportunity for you. And you, you, you didn't think, you didn't proclaim me before these men. What's the scripture say? I won't proclaim you before my father. So Lord, this gets into a whole theological discussion and well, well, when we're saved and we accept Christ and, and, and all, of that. all I know, God, is that you told us to be saved and baptized to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to praise you. And in all three of these aspects, I pray that the body of Christ at New Beginnings Chapel and those who are watching on the internet know this pastor's heart because I'm going to keep doing it as long as you allow me to, Father. There will be evangelistic messages. There will be encouraging messages. There will be healing messages. There will be joyful messages. There will be messages on peace. There will be messages on follow-up and, and strengthening one another. And there will be messages on be ye born again, lest any man should boast. No man comes to the Father except by the Son. May that be on our lips. May we proclaim it in our life and how we live. And may your light shine through these fractures in our lives that others will know if he can be saved, surely there's hope for me. And I thank you, Father. And I praise you for this message this morning, your precious word, and your promise of your love. In Jesus' precious holy name, we pray these things now. And everybody said, amen and amen. Stand with us and let's sing this chorus. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Pastor Randy, before you pray, I just have to say something. Um, my husband just preached on joy. Yes. And the joy of the Lord being within us. And I just have to tell you, I just saw the very cutest thing just happen in the sanctuary. Um, Danny Conwell just, <laughs> she just had surgery a week ago, a little over a week ago. Um, neck surgery, major neck surgery on her vertebra. And um, she is in a neck brace this morning, but she's here. And she's so excited to praise the Lord. And she has the joy of Christmas and the joy of yes. the salvation of Jesus yes. Christ in her heart. And she began singing that song, and she raised her hand up to worship the Lord. And her husband very gently reached over and took her hand and said, uh-uh, and pulled it back down again. Yes. <laughs> and I thought, there is the joy of the Lord, that she's not even going to let the limitations of neck surgery and what she's not yes. supposed to do keep her yes. from praising the Lord because Amen. of the joy in her heart. So, Danny, you blessed me. Amen. Amen. So, Lord, we are... God, we just want to thank you today, Lord, for the joy, God, that is our strength. And Lord, it, not, it doesn't come from the outside, but God, it comes from within. And Lord, uh, I just pray, God, this week, Lord, that uh, God, as we enter into this Christmas season, just within a couple of weeks, that God, as we feel and we experience the joy of salvation, we enjoy, God, we just enjoy, we just enjoy God, this holiday season. And Lord, we will not be afraid to share that joy with somebody else. Because, Lord, we don't know what they're going through, but, God, you do. So, Lord, let us be open. Let us be ready to share the joy of the Lord in this holiday season. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. God bless you.